Well, good afternoon. Um, this isn't exactly the way that I had planned on uh, meeting with you, but I guess uh, under the current conditions, we have to do what we have to do. My name is uh, Dr. Fred Govdich, and I'm the uh, chair of biology here at Southern Utah University. And uh, as you probably uh, read in my uh, biography, that you know, I came from the Southwest. I was actually born in uh, La Junta, Colorado, and uh, grew up in uh, Northern Arizona, particularly in Prescott, which where I graduated from high school. And then I went on to uh, Yavapai Community College and uh, got my associate degree there, and then went on to uh, Flagstaff, completed my bachelor's and did a master's. Now, one of the things that, um, you know, when you get to, to know me a little bit is you'll uh, find out that my uh, favorite little creatures are leeches. And uh, most people are kind of disgusted maybe at first and they're like, ew, leeches, why would you ever want to study something like that? And uh, yeah, I have kind of a bad joke. You know, they are cute little suckers. They really get attached to you after a while. Unfortunately, this really isn't uh, true for most leeches. Actually, leeches, um, you know, their popular image is something that's a, a blood sucker that attaches to you. You know, they, they end up in movies like Stand By Me or The African Queen attached to some main character's leg or something like that. But this is, a, like I said, a disservice to leeches. Uh, leeches are, in fact, a lot more diverse than that. In fact, many leeches um, are predators. They uh, feed on insects and worms and crustaceans and things like that. And those are really uh, some of the leeches I've had a lot of fun with. And I'll talk about some of those a little bit later. Um, again, you know, I completed my master's degree uh, at Northern Arizona University. Um, that's actually where I got interested in leeches. Uh, I had a friend who was working on little amphipods, and uh, I wanted to learn these new DNA techniques, you know, things you can do in genetic lab now. Um, and she was looking at kind of adaptations and evolution of these, uh, these amphipods in dry versus wet environments, looking at migration and all kinds of really kind of interesting things. And I thought that was pretty cool. And uh, as I was kind of starting in my master's program, I uh, you know, went to her. And I, I asked if I could, you know, kind of tag along and learn some of these techniques. And she's like, oh, sure, why don't you pick an organism that occurs in similar systems to mine? And that way we can kind of compare our results uh, at the end. So like, hey, okay, cool. Um, kind of looked around a little bit and uh, there was one little animal that kind of caught my interest. Um, it was a leech. And it was the leech that ate her amphipod. And there's a little bit more to it than just that it ate the amphipod. Um, <clears throat> this leech was doing some remarkable things. Um, it was hunting down these amphipods while they were swimming. And so I was like, well, how are they doing that? So that looks interesting. So in addition to kind of these you know, DNA molecular techniques, I thought, hey, this is kind of an interesting question that I can you know, kind of look at. And I was also interested in looking at, you know, kind of the same thing, you know, migration rates and stuff like that between different populations, because you don't think about leeches getting around very much. You know, they're these little tiny worms, and how do they go from one lake to or stream to another? So, okay, that seemed like a good good system to uh, to work on, and it actually turned out it was. So, so for my masters, I learned these uh, these molecular techniques, DNA fingerprinting, uh, using what's called the uh, Amplified fragment linked polymorphism, big long words, AFLP um, technique. And in fact, I was the first one to publish that method using animals, which is kind of cool. But I found you know some really interesting things about this leech. And actually, more than just that one species, uh, which we ended up describing as a new genus, um, but a number of other leeches at the same time. And you know, one of the things that, that we found, you know, using those DNA, DNA techniques was that um, these leeches were hitching a ride on waterfowl, and that's how they were getting around. So that was cool. Even though these leeches don't feed on the ducks or, you know, other water birds, they would ride on them. So they would get in the feathers or get on the legs, attach to them, and they would just ride from one lake or one body of water to another. So that was kind of cool. That was a neat outcome. Another thing, remember I mentioned this one leech uh, that fed on her amphipods. Um, yeah, it was a little bit unusual in that 
It was using passive sonar. Literally, it was listening to the sounds, the vibrations that were being produced by the prey and determining whether the prey were too large, because these are what we would call an engulfing predator. They swallow their food whole, kind of like a snake. Um, and you can't eat something too big because you can't swallow it. Um, you don't want to eat something too small because it's not worth it. So they were actually able to discriminate the size of, uh, or discriminate between the different sizes of amphipods and eat the ideal uh, sized uh, amphipods. They're the ones that were just right to fit in the mouth and they give just the right amount of energy. So again, that was kind of cool. And that, that was kind of where I started with my, uh, with my master's degree. And so that was in Northern Arizona. Well, once I finished up my, uh, my master's degree, I kind of started looking around and wanted to do a PhD. And so I was like, well, who should I work with? You know, where should I go? And there was this one researcher, um, Dr. Ron Davies, uh, who was at that time working at the University of uh, Calgary in Alberta, Canada. Um, <clears throat> I talked to him and, and he knew that I was working on some of these leeches in uh, Arizona. And so he was interested in taking me on as a student. So yay, that was great. But he was also in the process of um, essentially getting a job in Australia. So that was kind of a, a little bit of a, a change. I was like, oh, wow, okay, that sounds cool. Canada, Australia, hey, let's go Australia. So um, he ended up you know, moving down to Australia while I was still finishing up my master's, I actually did there for about a year before I moved down. And uh, during that time, we wrote some grants. Um, you know, I applied for uh, getting into a, a university called Monash University in uh, Melbourne. Uh, it's actually in Clayton, which is the southeastern suburb of Melbourne. And um, I was fortunate in that I got a essentially a full ride scholarship and I got a, uh, a $25,000 stipend uh, to be a graduate student. I uh, got a, a Monash Research Fellowship, so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, and that's actually one thing, when you're working in uh, you know, aquatic biology, you know, ecology, evolutionary biology, that kind of stuff, you know, it's not that you pay to go to school, they should pay you to go to school. And that's, that's actually still, in a lot of universities, the case. So keep that in mind if you're planning on going on. And so, okay, so things kind of worked out. I, I you know, got admitted into the, uh, the graduate program at Monash. Um, the problem is uh, their seasons are flipped. And so I actually ended up having to uh, kind of, you know, do some other things for six months before I went to Australia and ended up being a uh, adjunct uh, instructor at Yellow Pie College where I'd actually got my associate degree, different campus of that, but still same, same college. And then I went to Australia and uh, I, I guess I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And uh, it was a great experience, but it was also, you know, one of those things that, you know, it's, it was quite unexpected what, what happened and, and what I did, ended up doing and stuff like that. So, so, you know, whenever you get an opportunity to do something like that, jump at it because you don't know what's going to happen. You might think you know what's going to happen, but you don't. So, okay. So I ended up, okay. Going to Australia, um, <laughs> literally, I, uh, I, I left my, uh, my wife, Bonnie. Uh, uh, she actually had a job at Yellow Pie College uh, as a full-time instructor, so she stayed for the first year. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and then she came and joined me. You know, uh, she came down for about a month, halfway through, and then she came down and joined me uh, and stayed down for the rest of the, the time I was there. Ended up being in Australia for eight years. And um, the first five years of that was actually working on my uh, PhD. And then I did a, a postdoc uh, in Australia as well. So I ended up being there for quite some time. And it was, again, a wonderful experience. It was, you know, like I said, a little unexpected. You know, I expected, oh, maybe I'll be there for three to five years. Ended up being much, much longer. But actually, it was quite rewarding. Um, so anyway, I get on an airplane and fly to Australia. I never even met my PhD advisor. I was fortunate in that I knew one other person in Australia. It was somebody that had actually done their doctorate when I was a master's student 
in the same lab at Northern Arizona University. He'd actually gone off and done a postdoc in Tennessee and was doing a second postdoc in Australia with the same professor. So it was actually kind of uh, ironic because I got an email from uh, Ron Davies and he's like, oh, we're going to have a new postdoc in the lab. Uh, he's going to be starting just a little bit before you get down here. Do you happen to know, you know Dr. Clay Runk? And I was like, oh, yeah, I know Clay. Yeah, we go way back. And so we actually both ended up in Australia at the same time in the same lab. And that was good because, uh, you know, just basically jumping in like that, it was, it was nice having at least one friend. Not to say that my uh, PhD advisor wasn't a friend. He actually was a really good advisor. Um, but at least I knew somebody down there. So I'm on this plane, flying down there. I have a picture of my PhD advisor. Uh, so I had some idea what he looked like, but that was it. I'm sitting next to somebody um, who's from country Victoria, so kind of uh, outside of the, the city, outside of Melbourne or Geelong. And I was understanding about one and three words. And I was at that point, you know, kind of a little bit sad because I was, you know, leaving my wife and, you know, going somewhere else, which was kind of exciting, but kind of like, oh, what am I doing? What have I gotten myself into? And I'm like, wow, I thought they spoke English here. Uh, well, the problem is they do. We just don't. Um, so I ended up, okay, we get to Australia. Actually, we stopped in New Zealand, which was kind of fun. We uh, stopped and stayed in uh, Oakland for a bit of time. So I was able to get around the uh, airport there. And they actually have a really neat botanical garden and stuff like that. So that, that was kind of cool. But anyway, ended up in Australia. Um, arrived in Melbourne. And so I'm standing there with my two suitcases going, okay, now what? And I have a piece of paper with my mentor's picture on it. And he comes walking up and I'm like, oh, you must be wrong. <laughs> so that's kind of how it started off. Uh, and fortunately, you know, it, it did work out, but it was just like, wow. Um, you know, for those students that, uh, you know, come from other universities uh, to complete their degrees here, I understand. Um, yeah, I was the uh, international student in that case. And it was, it was, it was good. It was really good. Um, oh, I'm having a visitor here. We'll just go ahead and continue. Um, obviously, working from home. This is Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I, I made it over to the university. I was able to, to meet up with uh, Clay, the postdoc. So he was able to kind of show me around a little bit. Um, I was assigned an office and uh, there were four graduate students per office, uh, four PhD students. And so I shared an office with an Aussie, uh, Murray Logan. Uh, he studied koalas and uh, don't call them koala bears because he'll smack you upside the head. They're not bears. Um, Margaret Stanley, who uh, basically studied these little songbirds, uh, silver eyes, and she was looking at the feeding behavior of some of those. That was actually pretty cool too. Um, and actually the fourth person who started out when I got there, his name was Tom, and he was studying these giant crabs. I mean, literally, you know, it's kind of hard to say on the little screen, but bigger than my cat. Um, and, you know, huge crustaceans. So, you know, we kind of started out, um, you know, with, with the four of us in there. And right next door, we had another graduate student who was from uh, Sri Lanka. So we had a lot of fun uh, kind of uh, figuring out um, how to pronounce things. That was, that was part of the experience. Uh, none of us could agree on any of them. Uh, I remember one time I was, uh, I was talking to uh, Margaret. She was the Kiwi from New Zealand. And um, we were talking about you know, books that we liked reading and, and stuff like that. And uh, one of the books... <laughs> that she was talking about, she was like, did you ever read the book June? And I was like, June? And she's like, yeah, June. And I was like, no, what's it about? These, this giant desert world with these giant sunworms. And I was like, hmm, spell it. It's D-U-N-E, and it's like, oh, Dune. Yes, I know Dune. So again, it was just kind of, you know, being fully immersed into a different culture and, and everything. So uh, I have to kick Elizabeth out here. She's being a little bit distracting. Here. But, but that was, again, part of the, the experience. Um, during the first week that I was in Australia, actually the first, yeah, actually I think I arrived back on a Wednesday or something. It was like that next weekend. 
Um, I ended up uh, actually uh, going out into uh, one of the rainforests uh, up in the Bananongs. Uh, Murray Logan, the other office mate, uh, took took us up there because he knew, you know, we had Margaret from New Zealand and me from the U.S. I was a Yank, um, and so we went out and and uh, did some uh, spotlighting, which was actually pretty cool, uh, looking for koalas and possums and various other kind of to me exotic uh, mammals. Um, Actually, what we found more of were spiders, because when you spotlight, you see all of these blue eyes, and they're everywhere. Those are actually spiders, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> I like invertebrates, so it's kind of weird that way. Um, and so we did see koalas. We saw some possums. We saw sugar gliders, all kinds of really neat animals. You know, I'll show you a couple of pictures I have of uh, some of those animals. Um, so, you know, it was great. Next morning, he's like, oh, I'm going to take you down and show you some this lake, Oroville Lake. And, uh, you know, I was a aquatic biologist. And I wanted to study freshwater things. And um, so we went down there. And, and being an aquatic biologist, uh, I jumped in. That's what you do, right? You jump in the lake. Yeah. And um, start flipping over rocks because that's actually what you do when you're looking for leeches. Uh, most of these things actually live under rocks or attached to vegetation. Um, just attached to different things. And so I started flipping rocks and I found a leech. Yay! That's what I'd come to Australia for. So, yeah, I'm starting. I mean, you know, within the first week, I'm finding stuff. Um, didn't really think much of it at that time. I had some little whirl packs with little sample bags, uh, threw some leeches in there, took them back to the lab. And we were just literally setting that lab up. We were still buying microscopes and all kinds of stuff because, you know, Ron hadn't been there very long and Clay had just started. I was just starting out. So, so you know, we were just buying what we needed. So, you know, I'm excited. I got some containers, I got some leeches. We bought a brand new microscope. Woo! So, you know, things were working out pretty good. And, you know, I knew the leeches in North America pretty well, but, you know, didn't know much about the Australian leeches. So I started doing some research and found out there really wasn't a lot of information on them. Um, ironically, one of the other professors in the department. Uh, Sam Lake, who I ended up completing my PhD with, actually, um, had been friends with a, uh, a former leech biologist by the name of Richardson, and uh, he had all of his reprints, which is great. So he gave me all of them. I still have them in the filing cabinet in my office at SUU. And that started me out. I was like, wow, I got everything that's been published on Australian leeches. And my PhD advisor had more. He basically had a, a library that I was able to go in and, and basically copy anything I wanted. Um, I then, you know, went back and looked at that leech that I had found in Oroville and realized that it was something that really hadn't been described adequately. There were some pictures that Richardson had, but he never described, he didn't like those kinds of leeches because they're predators. He liked the bloodsuckers. And there's plenty of bloodsuckers in Australia. I'll talk about those a little bit later. But I like the predators. So I looked at this thing and, and I was like, wow, that's, that's a genus that hasn't been described for Australia before. And so that actually became my very first, uh, you know, kind of part of what I was going to end up doing for my PhD was actually describing the species. And that resulted from jumping in a lake within the first week of, a, of, of arriving in Australia. That was kind of cool. Um, so we named that one uh, Heliobdella or Heliobdella, some people call it, uh, Papilla ornata, which means the ornate papilla leech. They're really kind of pretty. Um, I think you can see my desktop over here. This right there is actually the head end of one of those leeches. You can see two eyes these kind of stripes. Um, and I didn't know at that time that that leech was going to be very, very important for a very long time. In fact, I still um, kind of look back on this leech as kind of like the turning point of um, kind of where my career went, just from jumping in the lake. So when you get the opportunity, don't be afraid to take that jump. Um, anyway, so, okay, so there I am. I'm brand new in the country, 
um, looking at cool critters that turn out nobody's seen before. And uh, that was kind of the start of uh, my eight year odyssey in Australia and doing work in Australia. So the, the presentation that I have up on my desktop there, the tender loving leeches is something that actually uh, came from my uh, PhD uh, dissertation, some of the work that I had done there, and also from the uh, postdoc that I ended up doing uh, following um, the completion of my, uh, my PhD. And there's a couple of, there's actually three different kinds of leeches on here. You have this one here, which is the one that I described before, this one I jumped in the lake for. Uh, this one is a predatory leech, it feeds on snails. This other one over here in the other corner that has six eyes, this is called Albuglossophonia australiensis. And that one actually had been described uh, fairly well, so we knew about that one. It is also a snail predator. They're actually, these two at the top are in the same family. So somewhat closely related to one another. So they're cool. It's one in the middle. Um, we named that one Homer, <laughs> big fat uh, blood sucking leech. This is uh, what's called Richardsonius australis. And um, you'll probably recognize the name Richard Sonius. It's actually named after the friend of the other professor in the, uh, the biology department at Monash. And this is an Australian medicinal leech. And it's used in hospitals to today. They actually use them for plastic surgery, reconstructive surgery. Um, they're also a source for pharmaceutical compounds and stuff like that. So, you know, that actually turned out to be really kind of an interesting leech. Um, you can see it's actually quite large, <laughs> not small leeches. Um, and that one is a freshwater blood sucking leech. And, uh, yeah, you find those all over the place in uh, some of the billabongs and, and stuff like that, the, basically the oxbow lakes and, and ponds. Um, this other one down here at the bottom, it's actually the same picture just flipped around to make it look cool. This is actually a terrestrial leech. So Australia is unique in the number of land or terrestrial leeches that they have. Um, and this is actually one I think we collected from, that one's actually a Tasmanian leech. And so, <laughs> he looks happy. Uh, <clears throat> these ones are also uh, blood suckers. So, so the, the two at the bottom and the one in the middle there have jaws that look kind of like half circular saws. And they use those to cut through the skin and then they inject an anticoagulant, vasodilator, and various other compounds to make you bleed, <laughs> which gives them food. Um, and so there's plenty of these guys uh, cruising around. Um, and actually some of these uh, terrestrial ones, uh, one of the things I learned while I was there, uh, they can go behind your eyeball. So you gotta be a little bit careful. Glasses are almost a must there, or even safety glasses. Um, Cause these can be kind of uh, uh, annoying, I guess. But most of the ones that I had on, that we ever got on me, I was able to collect before they actually bit me because I was looking for them. So anyway, so those are just a few of the leeches. Um, so, you know, I kind of mentioned this guy up here is kind of being a turning point of, I guess, my research and my career. After jumping in that lake and finding that leech, I found that it had eggs and babies on its ventral surface. And at the time, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. But I didn't realize how important that was going to be. People had described parental care in leeches before in this family. It's, you know, that's actually really the only family that does that. Hey, I turn that off, sorry. Um, and so, you know, it wasn't unknown to have parental care in leeches. And I kind of knew that they did that, but... I didn't kind of grasp how interesting that could be. So the title of this is Tender Loving Leeches. And that's actually because of these leeches right here. And so most people don't realize how interesting these animals can be. So I'll go ahead through, this is actually a presentation I gave a number of years ago. I thought I'd bring it up because it had some really cool pictures. So here's our little uh, Homer the bloodsucking leech. And you know, this is really the question that you know, or the, you know, 
this is the question. These are really the answers to, you know, why study leeches. They are cool, um, but they can be used medicinally. In fact, uh, another story from Australia, we had a, uh, a instrument maker that worked in our college who was working with a milling machine. And if you know anything about milling machines, they're not cutting, they're grinding. And so he would use those to make things, grind metal, you know, sheet metal, stuff like that. Well, he got into a bit of an accident, um, an argument with the milling machine. Of course, the milling machine won, took his fingers off, let's see, right about, you know, right about here. And again, it's not a cut, it's not a saw. So it's not a clean wound. Ugh. So, you know, the doctors, they, they were like, well, we'll try to save your fingers. They reattached his fingers. Um, the arteries, which are thick walled, um, were visible. They were able to reattach those. Arteries are what bring the blood into the fingers. Veins, very thin walled, kind of destroyed. You couldn't find those. So the blood could get in, but it had nowhere to go. So what, what do you do? Well, they used this species of leech, this Richardsonius astralis, which is one that I'd been studying in the lab. Um, as I said, they used them medicinally. And they, they, what they did was they attached the leeches to the, uh, there we go, the ends of his fingers here that allowed, that pulled the blood out, allowed fresh blood to come into his fingers, allowing his body an opportunity to heal. And so he, he actually kept his fingers and that was really down to this leech. So that was kind of cool. So, and that was actually about, that was actually postdoc at that time. So that was, you know, several years after I arrived. Um, but at that point, I, you know, I, I knew that leech species fairly well. I'd actually grown it in the, le in the lab. Um, I ironically knew a leech farmer who raised these leeches and sold them to hospital. And, and he was actually the source of the leeches for my friend. I knew the patient and that was, that was pretty cool. So, so again, kind of the, the, the medical side of things, you know, these leeches are still used today. And this Australian leech, this, this leech, this Australian uh, Richardsonius australis, was one of the ones that that they actually used. So I thought that was kind of cool too. Um, <clears throat> this actually shows some of the uh, the parental care. So you know, kind of you know, think about okay, they got medicinal properties and stuff like that. Well, and this is where I kind of come in. This leech right here, this is one of the ones that I found that first week in Australia. These are the babies or these are the eggs, they're gonna be babies later, right here. And this is the parent. Now the leeches are hermaphrodites. That means that they're male and female at the same time, which leads to all kinds of weird genetics. Um, so this one's tending its, its, its eggs and tend its juveniles, it's the, the young once they hatch. And this is what I saw and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And the more, you know, I, I kept, a colony of these alive in the lab, and I, I collected them in lots of different locations throughout Victoria. Um, and this literally became a chapter in my dissertation, looking at this parental care. And it wasn't just the fact of saying, yeah, they have it. I looked at, you know, how long they took care of the eggs and young, what happened um, once they hatched. I actually had a number of students working with me, undergraduates, um, who kind of took aspects of the project and looked at, uh, you know, cross fostering to the babysit, um, sibling rivalry in, in the juveniles, um, the costs and benefits. So a lot of really neat stuff came out of um, just that one observation that, you know, these things had this parental care. And so, you know, we, as we kind of worked on these, we realized we had different um, strategies. We had nesting leeches, we had external uh, brooding, which is what we see right here. So they, the eggs are attached to the ventral surface. The juveniles will remain attached once they hatch. And there's even a couple of leeches, uh, there's one in Africa and one in South America, South Africa, um, that have essentially live birth, uh, vivipary. It's actually probably over vivipary. Um, <clears throat> so the eggs hatch in this, this chamber, this pouch, and then they emerge from there. So, that was kind of cool. So again, that was just 
fortuitous jumping into a lake. You just never know what's going to happen. So kind of cool. Um, and just because probably most of you don't know what a leech is, and I've been going on and on about leeches, they're worms. They're actually closer related to earthworms and stuff like that. Does you kind of know what, what those are? Let's kind of let's let's look down here a little bit further. Let's, let's look at some of the different kinds of leeches. These are all Australian leeches in these uh, pictures. So ones that I collected or had given to me while I was down there. It actually turned out by you know working on a, a group of organisms that nobody else really cares about. <laughs> uh, I very quickly became the uh, the leading expert for Australasian leeches, and I still am. Uh, in fact, I just published a new book, a book chapter actually. And uh, I published a book that came from my dissertation on the taxonomy of leeches in Australia. So, you know, yeah, it's kind of something that I didn't know I was going to do that when I started this whole thing. So it's kind of cool. So, yeah, believe it or not, there are leeches that are marine. In fact, I collected some in Australia. I've collected them um, here in the United States, in Oregon, California. Um, many of these are... Uh, parasitic, they're ectoparasites. They get on the outside of their host. Uh, they do feed on uh, blood. Um, the ones in the uh, Piscicolidae, so those are the fish leeches, and the Ozobranchidae, uh, have a proboscis that's like a hypodermic needle they punch out their mouth and, and suck blood out of their prey. Um, they also have these little, these are actually gills uh, on the side, and you kind of see the little bumps all over on this one down here. Those are called pulsatile vesicles. They use those for respiration. They're actually uh, kind of increasing the uh, gas exchange with the environment. It's kind of cool. Um, these ones don't have, don't have parental care though, so yeah, still interesting. Uh, we have the glossophonus. Now this is the one that um, that I've been talking about. This is the Helibella. In fact, this one right here, Helibella papillonata, is that one that I uh, described. And you can see the dark spots. I thought it kind of looked pretty. Looks like a beanbag. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, there we go. Call that one back. Um, too many things going on. Um, so yeah, so that's that's this leech. It's feeding on these snails and there's the, uh, the young right there. So there's those leeches here. I'm going to pause for a second here and We'll see what we. Okay, so sorry, I had to. We we're in the process of doing some things in the department, so I had to take a little bit of a break there for a sec. Okay, so uh, anyway, as I was kind of talking about, you know, parental care and these leeches, um, you know, here's the one with the eggs. And these ones also feed with proboscis. This is actually a picture that I took of one sticking its tongue out at you. So it uses that to uh, puncture into its prey and and suck out the fluids there too. Again, most of these are predators. There are a few blood sucking ones in this group. Um, ironically, uh, there's one that lives in the rectum of a hippo. So we don't have those in Australia though. So that was more in Africa. Um, and then here's actually another one. This was actually an invasive uh, leech, but we found it in Australia, uh, Barbarani weberi. Uh, this is an engulfing predator. And again, this is actually the cocoon here and they abandon the cocoon. So I'm just kind of showing the different forms of uh, parental care in there. So that, that was, this is all kind of an extension of uh, kind of those observations I made right there as a graduate student. So kind of cool. Uh, and then here's our jawed leeches. So here's another, uh, this is actually another, uh, this is called uh, uh, Bassanabdella. It's a, actually most of the ones in this group are actually blood feeding. This one's actually eating an earthworm. This is another uh, terrestrial leech down here, Philemon. Kind of a picture of the jaw right here. You can see how they cut through the uh, skin. And they can either have two jaws or three jaws. And I'd ask people, well, you got bit by a leech. Did you have a V or did you have a Y? And they would look at me funny. Don't know why. Qantas wouldn't go with my uh, suggestion of having leeches to treat deep vein thrombosis either, but oh well. <laughs> have to be kind of weird to be a biologist. Um, so anyway, these are some of the, uh, the blood, these are the ones that we would consider blood feeding leeches. And these are some of the Australian ones here. Uh, this one actually, when we originally found it, uh, we named it the Bundaberg eye. Uh, this one actually ended up decimating the earthworm farms in uh, Queensland. So that wasn't so great. 
but um, they didn't really heed my warnings either because I told them to make sure to kind of isolate these things and they ignored me. So yeah, kind of bad, bad stuff happens too. Um, but this is kind of what they're known for, uh, <laughs> medicinal uses. These are actually some of those uh, Richardsonids again, uh, that one that was used on my friend. And this was actually taken in my lab. We fed them horse blood and uh, people would always come in and watch. Uh, these things would increase two or three times their size and uh, fill up on, on the blood. They're actually in water, which is kind of starting to turn red down here. But we have a sausage skin over the end of this, uh, so this uh, syringe barrel. And they would actually just feed through that. So kind of fun to take care of, actually. But these are some of the different things that we can use leeches for. So anticoagulants, vasodilators. Um, we have this uh, hyaluronidase, there we go. Uh, this one actually changes the permeability of the tissues. So lots of stuff can be taken from these, uh, these leeches. And they can be used quite a bit um, in uh, hospitals and stuff like that. And they use them even today in plastic surgery, uh, blood clotting disorders, treating arthritis, varicose veins, all kinds of stuff. So pretty cool. And for those that are interested in uh, you know, pharmacology or something like that, uh, here are some of the drugs, actually. These are the compounds right here. So if you have a, uh, a friend or um, a relative or maybe yourself that has a uh, blood clotting disorder, maybe they'll give you one of these things like Kalin or Torsin or something like that. These all come from these leeches right here. So they're, they're used and they're quite interesting. In fact, Used to always joke that leeches might cure cancer one day. Well, this decorsin right here uh, from Macrobella decor, that's actually a North American leech, um, prevents the metastasis of sometimes cancer. So I wasn't really joking. Didn't know it at the time though. See? So kind of cool. And just to kind of continue on with the, uh, the leech theme here, here's some leech pornography. Ooh, I could get in trouble here. So here's a couple of the Richardsonians mating. I also have other ones that have these little stromatophores in there. So kind of cool. So, so really, you know, kind of being in the right place at the right time, which was Australia, I was able to learn a lot of really neat stuff. So it turned out to be really a, a fascinating uh, experience while I was down there. But let's, let's take a bit of a pause. I'm going to stop the share here for a sec and bring up some other pictures. And these are some of the pictures of, um, of Australia, some of the places that I, I went and some of, the, uh, some of the things that we saw. And I'll just kind of go through some of those because, you know, keep it interesting here, right? And I want you to, to come up with some questions while you're, uh, you know, watching this or watching what I've already been talking about. So I'll share this again, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay, so so yeah, this, this is a billabong. Um, and we're not talking like surfing stuff. Um, and in this billabong here, we have some of our waterfowl. Uh, you might recognize that as a, a pelican. Um, and that's what it is. There are also you find things like spoonbills and I've seen kangaroos splashing through billabongs before. This one is in the Dananongs. Uh, kind of north of uh, Melbourne. I believe that's where this one was. Um, one of the things that you notice, or you may notice here, is you can see the forest kind of behind there. You can see all these trees. Well, these are all eucalypts. Um, so superficially, it kind of looks like something you might see here. But then if you look closely, everything's different. You know, it's kind of one of the things I noticed a lot of when I was in Australia. It's like, whoa, that kind of looks like home, but it's not quite. So you go to the outback and it looks like around here in Utah and Arizona, but kangaroos and eucalyptus, so a little bit different. So kind of cool though. Um, so here's some of our little kangaroo friends. This is actually near uh, Cardinia Reservoir. Actually, this isn't too far from that lake that I jumped into the first week that I was there. And uh, some of our little friends, uh, so these are Eastern gray kangaroos. Uh, you can see the little pouch there sure if I can see the joeys. Um, <clears throat> but you have the little joeys hanging out. You see the little joeys bouncing around and they'd go boing, 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 and then they'd like boing into the pouch. And the mom just kind of sits there going, mm -hmm. you know, like, isn't that a herd? 
the legs are sticking out. Blah. But they're they were cute. They're pretty cool. You wouldn't want to walk up to one of these guys though. They could like rip your guts out literally, uh, especially the eastern or the the giant red ones. Uh, those those could be quite dangerous though. So these are probably about oh four or five feet tall in size. But again, you can see the forest. It's all eucalyptus back there in this kind of a paddock area right there, kind of cleared. Um, so kind of a neat, neat area though. Um, this is actually looking out from where I lived in uh, Clayton, uh, that, that little park right there. Um, this is kind of an open area. I think they've built up on it now, but you can you know, kind of see the, the forest off there and some of the different trees. Uh, so that was literally the view outside my kitchen window. Pretty cool. And we had parrots and corellas and uh, cockatoos and all kinds of things. We, you know, we had these lorikeets that we called squeaker buys, you know, you know, rainbow lorikeets and things like that. We had galahs, which are these pink cockatoos. I mean, the place was like a zoo. It was, it was fun. Um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, this is actually up in the mountains in the Dananongs. Uh, actually kind of looking, oh, I think we were kind of looking uh, southeast actually from the Dananongs. See, uh, that's that Cardinia Lake that other picture was and you can see the you know the expanse of forest there um not far from where this photo was taken i think there's a, a an old steam engine called puffing billy which you can ride which is kind of cool um some of the wildlife um can't remember which kind of bird that was but they had weird birds uh even their pigeons were colorful uh, i think this is actually a, i think it's a dove actually or a kind of dove uh, and that's actually a uh, tree fern behind it. So I always expected dinosaurs to come walking out of the, uh, the forest. It's kind of cool. Uh, again, some of our uh, lounging eastern grays. Uh, they're very good at lounging. It must have been a hot day because they're all in the shade there. Uh, the color is a little bit off because I, th I think it was under the tree. This is actually, I think, a eastern rosella. It's kind of parrot. Uh, crimson rosellas are red. They're cousins of these guys. I had one land on me and eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's kind of funny. Um, ah, there's me uh, actually in a river somewhere. Uh, I think that was near Wadonga in northern Victoria on the border with New South Wales. I was just taking some water chemistry there. Got my uh, hat on there. <laughs> There we go again, just kind of collecting some leeches, collecting some data there under that old bridge. Uh, you may not see it very well, but this is actually a little ground fowl right there and kind of some of this grass and weeds and stuff. That actually looks like a uh, pea of some, some kind, probably invasive there. They have lots of invasive plants, which is unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, there's a little bird right there. Um, here's some baby pictures for leeches. So I had to get some of those in there. Aren't they cute? Those little eyes right there. And here's the uh, dorsal surface. You can see the little babies right there. So that's that same Helabella picolinata. And there's the eggs. They're throwing a few, uh, few things like that. And there's the eyes. That's the same picture I showed you before. And one of the things that we found with these guys is they're actually social or pre-social too, which is another aspect of their biology, which was unexpected, but kind of cool. My wife's actually a marine biologist, so we spent some time um, on the beaches or along the shores. I wouldn't call that a beach, it's pretty rocky. Um, but she studies sea spiders, and so we would find sea spiders in these tide pools and stuff. Um, this, I believe, was down by Phillip Island, and there's actually penguins down there, which is pretty cool, too. Uh, so yeah, you can see penguins in Australia, too. Little cute guys. <laughs> They're, they're pretty neat though. Uh, this is kind of looking into the tide pool there and then kind of out across. I think this is actually Phillip Island right there. There's a bridge that actually is kind of behind me that goes out to that. So that was pretty cool. Uh, we did see great white shark. Uh, not here, but further down the coast, uh, just right off, the, right off the shore. So you never know what you're going to find, even in the marine system there. Uh, yes, and it's just our showing how weird we are. So these are the sea spiders and these are leeches on our wedding rings. So here's our Tasmanian happy leech. 
And this is actually showing what the leeches look like as we're collecting them. And actually the leeches around here in Southern Utah look very much like that. So we actually find the same family of leeches here. So it's kind of cool. We also found some other kind of neat little animals. This is actually one that Bonnie really likes, the wombat. Uh, kind of chilling out there. I think this is at Heelsville. Um, a yabby, pretty tasty actually. Uh, the crayfish, they're blue there though. It's a little bit different. And so yeah, now we're back to the beginning there. So, so yeah, uh, hopefully this was a little bit of an introduction there. Um, kind of a little bit of the story. There's a lot more to tell. I was there for eight years, so I have lots and lots of kind of fun stories about collecting leeches and having them collect me and being outsmarted by leeches and, and all kinds of stuff. So um, I think at this point, I'll just go ahead and end and maybe we can get some questions and I can join you again. So good night, Mike, no worries. And we'll see you later.